Hello everyone, Reza here. Today we're diving into local fog volumes in Unreal Engine. Usually, when you add fog to your level, it's either everywhere or nowhere, unless you're using volumetric fog, which can be tricky to control. But with local fog volumes, you can drop fog exactly where you want it, shaping your scene with precision. If you've heard about this amazing feature, but you never had a chance to try it out, you are in the right place. As usual, let's break it down step by step and see how we can use local fog volumes in Unreal Engine. Here I am inside Unreal Engine. Let's talk local fog. They are amazing. They work on all platforms and scalability settings, making them great for both high-end and low-end hardware. They also blend seamlessly with other fog systems and lighting setup without the heavy performance cost of volumetric fog. You may have noticed that in my lighting, I have exponential height and fog and if I scroll down I should have volumetric fog enabled for the scene. With this scenario I can easily bring local fog and make it work. If you don't want that and you just want to work solely with local fog you can easily disable your exponential height fog and bring local fog and work with that as well. As usual, I'm going to pay a visit to project settings first to see if local fog is enabled in our scene. I'm going to go into engine and I find rendering. In the search, I put fog to narrow down my search and you can see local fog is now supported. You need to make sure that statement is true. If not, you tick that box, you restart your engine, and you're good to go. Also, as a side note, if you want your local fog to interact with translucent actors, then under translucency, you need to make sure that local fog volume apply on translucent is also enabled. Now, where to find local fog? There are two places that you can access this incredible tool. The first one, is within the place actors. So you go into window, make sure place actors is ticked so you have access to it. You go to VFX and you find local fog volume. The second place to find local fog is through create. You click on create, you go into visual effects and your local fog is there. Now I'm going to drag and drop it in here so we have access to it and we can see it. Now, sometimes when you drop in your local fog, it's just not showing. The reason for that is because of the start distance, which by default is set to 2000, which is pretty high. To demonstrate that, if I exit the pilot and try my best to get close to local fog, it disappears. So every time you try to be in the fog, it's not going to work out for you. And I will give you a tip throughout the tutorial to solve that problem. But for now, let's just stick with what we have and go over the attributes uh, because there's quite a few and they're very important. The first one is radial fog density. And radial fog density basically controls how thick or thin the fog is at the center. So it really doesn't matter if this fog is a hemisphere or it's a full sphere. It actually looks at the center and based on that changes the opacity of your fog. So if I reduce it, we lose the opaqueness, becomes transparent. And if I increase it, it's adding to its thickness. 
very straightforward. The other one is more or less doing the same thing with more control, and that is called height fog distribution. And it adjusts the fog fades as height increases. So it solely relies on the Z axis. I usually start with height fog fall off. Look what happens when I increase it. I'm turning it into a hemisphere. And if I reset that and go to the height fog offset, that stretches the fog until we see the full circle. How cool is that? And the other one, height fog density, kind of eats into the fog and make it disappear based on your Z axis. So if I lower this, you can see it's going to be shrinked towards the Z axis. So there's so many cool things that you can do if you want your fog to be kind of grounded, locked on the ground surface without too much fall off on the upper level of your scene, you can easily squish it down and change the fade as well and get it to what you want like that. Obviously, there are times when you want to color your fog and in that case, you go to Fog Albedo and simply color it. Uh, be very careful with that fog albedo property because you don't want people to, for example, in here, you don't want people to confuse fog with dust. They have totally different physical attributes and you don't want to kind of confuse the audience. Now, you may have noticed that I jumped over what is turned out to be my favorite property, scattering distribution, but we will get to that. I'm going to jump from fog emissive as well, because to demonstrate that, I need to switch to a completely different camera angle. So uh, hold on to it. I will demonstrate that as well. But while we have this beautiful sphere, let's make it a complete sphere. Let's demonstrate fog sort priority. I'm going to hold down Alt and duplicate this guy. So we have two overlapping fogs. I'm going to change the color for this one to red. And I'm going to select the other one and change that to blue. You can see the overlapping section is magenta meaning that we can actually overlap two local fog actors at the same time. Which one takes priority will be defined by fog sort priority. Just keep looking at this overlapping area once I change fog sort priority. Blue, red, blue, red. And if I reset the value, it will be somehow find the middle ground. So if you have layers of fog, of course, you have creative control on which is going to outweigh the other if need be. Now, I believe it's time to talk about scattering distribution. So I'm going to remove the second local fog, select my local fog, the only one that I have in the scene and reset its color. I'm going to reset the offset as well, and I'm going to increase that to something like 20. I'm going to push that on the ground just a tad, maybe 20 is a bit too high or too much, maybe seven or even six. So we get something. We have uh, a good amount of fog in our scene to play around with. And at the same time, if you want, you can always enable exponential height and fog as well to sort of blend between the two. But for now, I'm just going to work with local fog volume. And let's see what this attribute does. Scattering distribution. I love this property. And it simply determines how light spreads inside the fog. It brings light pollution from the environment and let the colors get absorbed by the fog. So because it's facing the sky and the sky is blue, 
if I increase the scattering distribution, I'm getting more or less a bluish type of color, which adds a lot to the realism in our scene. Gotta love that. I use this all the time. Obviously, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not going to go all the way and put odd values in there, but just a touch of ambient color in your fog takes your scene to the next level. Still, I have the same problem. If I exit the pilot and try to get to the fog, it disappears. It's just uh, not allowing me to interact with the fog whatsoever. Let's address that and then we talk about fog emissive. To address this, you need to basically make use of the console command to change the start distance in your local fog volume. So in the console command, I'm going to type down R dot local fog volume and then start with global and the one that we want comes up global starts distance now the default if i put the question mark in there and look at my log the default is set to 2000 which i found to be very very high if i set this down to a ridiculously low number like 20. Not only the fog gets closer to the camera, but the beauty of that is if I again exit the pilot and try to go inside the fog, this time I actually can. So this is really cool. So if you have a character and you want the character to interact with the fog, uh, definitely lower this value. Otherwise, this local fog is just going to be a fog card. Obviously, 20 was a bit too low, maybe 200. It's a, a better value for it, but still you can see I can interact with the fog without uh, the local fog escaping from the scene and keep its distance. So far, so great. I'm really happy with the result, but there is one attribute left that we didn't talk about, and that is fog emissive. So with fog emissive, you can just color it, whatever you want to color it, and there is no change. That can be a little bit confusing. That's why I am changing the emissive attribute of my local fog, and I don't see any change. It's because you need to make sure to sort of unplug your light source or to some degree tone down your directional light. I can just go up like this and select my local fog, bring it ever so slightly higher, increase its size so it covers a bigger area I'm going to reduce the scattering distribution because I want pure color in this particular example. And I'm going to turn off some of these lights. I'm going to select my local fog and I'm going to put a big value in there. There you go. You can see that now we have the emission for our fog, which is working beautifully. So that's another way to create and use a local fog in your scene. Perhaps 50 is a bit too much, 20, 10, 5. And for now, it's creating a really kind of toxic-ish looking environment. But that certainly can be used on particular scenarios if need be. That should do the trick. I'm not gonna drag on this tutorial for no apparent reason. That's all there is to it. That's all you need to know to start using local fog in Unreal Engine. Hope you found this video useful. Until the next one, see you guys later.